Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play of Pain in Life. Hope you guys are having a dope Saturday night, man. How's it going? Here we go with another one of these tonight. We got a dope one for you. We got Bane the Bat from Night Models Batman Miniatures Game. This is the third edition of the dope game. I love it. Hopefully you do too. It's a great game. You need to get involved. You need to play it. It's super fun. Uh, and, you know, you get to paint stuff like this, guys. Like, this is sick. This is, this is great. So, uh, I haven't done really anything yet on this thing. This is just, uh, right now, I, I just started by uh, applying uh, what I consider to be the base of the skin coat. So, this is the... Um, this is just... Uh, dark Oath Flesh. Uh, so I've got a contrast paint going on there. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do some blocking. Uh, and then we're going to figure out the coolest part about this miniature, which is the armor. Okay, because this model has some pretty sick looking armor. Uh, but right now we're going to finish the uh, we're going to finish the color blocking on this model. Um, but he has this he has awesome looking armor. Okay, so dare I say, hey, what's up, Shadowcat? Welcome to the feed. Dare I say I should start with the, uh, well, actually do the cowl, which is uh, a little unusual, but I want to get started on the cowl because the cowl is really a super, super dark blue. Um and I'm gonna, I've got to play around with the cowl a little bit to get it to where I want. I think what I want to do is Levadon blue, and then I think I'm going to shade it up, or shade it down, and then highlight it up. I think that's the general plan. All right, so if you have your Batman, Bane the Bat model, you can follow along. Uh, this is Bane the Bat. This is Bane as Batman. Um, and this is a, a limited edition uh, model for night miniatures. Okay. So, uh, so if you wanted to follow along, uh, so we block everything with contrast paints, and then we start doing the actual painting after that. Okay. So, uh, so this is um, dark oath flesh there on the skin, and then I've got some Templar black on the pants. Okay. So we're going to get in all the major bits there. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or threats, you know where to send them. Okay, I'm going to, I may actually end up out of frame doing this, but I got to, I got to get, this is going to be some fine manipulation going on here around the face area. So you can see this Levadon blue going down. It's actually more of a... The Levadon blue is kind of like a... Kind of getting like a, a, a modern age Batman color. Maybe a Frank Miller Batman color going here. But I'm going to want to be fairly precise here around the face. So that I don't do what I just did. You started what today? You started the Asbats Mini today. Okay, cool. Cool. You know, if you if you want to update us on your uh, your projects, uh, you are always welcome to post, you know, some work in progress or anything like that in the uh, in the Discord. And I think when I'm, I'm going to start doing what a lot of uh, a lot of YouTubers and streamers do is, you know, encourage people to post um, in my Discord uh, image feed, and then you know we can show them off on air, talk them up, talk about them a little bit, right? And I can give some commentary on uh, how cool I think you're. Uh, your paint job is because I, I definitely am sure I will think it is super cool. 
All right, so I'm going to have to paint, repaint his eye in, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to need a much bigger brush to get the larger parts of this uh, cowl done. But you can see, it's going to be pretty cool, I think, when, when she comes in. Finally, a use for Levadon Blue, right? And still, meanwhile, still no use for Ultramarine's Blue. Levadon Blue is actually this really dark like navy color in real life this is one of my favorite colors to wear so i really like this color you can see the plate painted um logo uses this uh this color as one of its colors because it is it's just one of my favorite like personal colors i, sh I guess i should say right i like to wear this color i like black and white and yellow so you'll see a lot of that. I don't wear much yellow though. I just don't have a lot of yellow stuff in my my wardrobe. My wife buys a lot of my clothes these days and she does not like yellow and I think yellow is awesome. But hardly anyone agrees with me. <laughs> I bat Bane will destroy Gotham, shall perish by fall. What's up Nelson? Nelson, how did the rest of the uh, Lord of the Rings game go? Did you guys succeed where where I failed? Were you able to succeed in the campaign? Or do you have to just start over now? Did we fail entirely? <laughs> Does the game have like a, a uh, you know, like a, a catastrophic fail mode where like if you fail too much of the campaign, you just pack it up and... You know, call yourself a loser. Rethink your life. Did, like, how does that work? I guess I'm not really looking for a board game to be that traumatic, but, you know, could be. Alright. Okay, so you can see, it leads a nice... It leaves a nice, pretty solid color there. Like, this is a really nice color when it comes down to it. Whoa. Let's see if I can get in this tiny little spot here. Uh, we took over, yeah, we found three clues and we ran out until I gave you a pass on the next campaign without max foot and experience points. Ah, sadness. But I want my new title, damn it. It's okay. It's all good. For what it's worth, it was very fun. I had a lot of fun. Jason wants to restart and find five committed players. Well, fine, Jason. I'm too much of a, I'm too much of a non-committal person. <laughs> Can't play in a campaign, Jason. Sorry, dude. <laughs> have a rotating spot. Have a, you know, have a guest star. Like one person plays, uh, you know what, that would, Lord of the Rings, that game seems like it would be dope to play uh, uh, on stream. Because you could have, you know, if you did it right, you could run the app on a, an, on, a, uh, on an engine like this, on XSplit, right? So that everybody could watch at home. And then you have uh, a bunch of players on, maybe on Zoom or something. And then, you know, you shuffle their cards for them and, you know, they make the really, it's just like how we used to do it before. They just make decisions. 
Oh my gosh, I don't really have much water. He's watching the uh, DC fandom stream, and Dirk Mags looks like a Klingon. <laughs> oh no, you don't have to give me your game, dude. It's all good. I'm just saying, like, if I wanted to do it, uh, I would I would paint my own. If you want to, like, if you want to run the game that way. I'm, I'd be willing to do that. We'd have to find... Uh, uh, I think what we would want to do is run four players. And, you know, you have four committed players, Jason. Four players. <laughs> Just messing with you, man. Um, but yeah, we have four committed players, right? And if I did it, I would just be basically the DM or whatever. I would just run the... Uh, the administrative stuff. Oh, we know that's a lie. I would play. I would play just so I could do the voices. Do they, Gandalf? I would just do. <laughs> I would just want to play just so I could play the voices. Best part of that game. It's that game. If I'm being honest with you, Nelson, I would not enjoy that game if it if it didn't have painted miniatures. I would think that's the most, like, oh, Yvonne loves D&D. The problem is Yvonne um, is a super flake. Uh, I love you, Yvonne, but don't, I, come on. She's she's a college, she's a college kid, and, you know, she plays a lot of D&D, &D and, uh, you know, she's got, she's got stuff to do. I guess we could ask her. You know, we could ask her if she would be interested in doing it. Andrew would be doing it. Committed to Arkham Asylum. <laughs> yes. Andrew would be cool, but uh, I don't know. His work schedule is also a little messed up. So. so Andrew is very tough these days to kind of pin down for stuff. I, I agree, though. Andrew and Yvonne would be super entertaining. As, you know, your party. If it's you, Jason, Andrew, Yvonne, and I just sort of run the... I could... I, you know what I could even do is I could run... Um, I could just run the pieces and then, you know, knowing that Yvonne and Andrew are kind of... Um, we'll say flakish for... I'm trying to be nice. They're, but they're busy. They're busy. Um... That I could like fill in, right? I would fill in for for one character. So there would always have to be one character. Uh, you know, I mean, what I'm saying is there would always have to be at least one of them. They would always have to have at least three of these four players to play. I bet we could get Sean if you wanted another player. So does that mean you have to, like, you can't even run, a, like, a part of the game and leave a player out? Like, oh, okay, we're going to do this part of the campaign without, uh, you know, without so-and-so, and then they can catch up. Like, they'll just not play in this part. They won't gain experience. We'll just leave their character as is, and then they can jump in on the next part of the campaign. Can you do that? I think that would make it more flexible. We could get more players in that way. Okay. So what I need to do right now, while that's drying, I guess I could we could start on the skin proper. So let's start on the skin proper. You know, we could we'd have to commit to doing it once a week, right? It would have to be a weeknight where the the maximum amount of people would be available. Uh, oh, it's a full journey like the movie. You mean you can't just leave, like, Mary and Pippin alone for half a movie <laughs> with a treant? You either Lord of the Rings or you don't. In the Game of Thrones, you either win the game or you die. Alright, so 
So this is uh, this is one of my favorite skin combos is uh, fair shadow and a drop of not chestnut brown. I'm lying. I guess you could do chestnut brown. Where? I mean, honestly, if you wanted to talk flake, probably I would be one of the biggest flakes because I have to make sure, like, that I can stream. <laughs> The game is Journey in Middle Earth, not Vacation Time at the Holiday Inn. Oh man, Holiday Inn is terrifying. <laughs> I stayed at the Holiday Inn near Comic Con, and some of them nights were not the safest nights. Alright, anyway. But yeah, I would be about the same you know, level of commitment as, like, if we wanted to do Shadows of Brimstone or something like that. But, the best, it, it would be a lot less junk fly, flo, uh, floating around the board, and the app would do a lot of this for you. So we gotta we gotta think about gotta think about how serious we would be about doing this because you know I would say this Nelson um, you probably I think you should probably shop around for a local group to commit with you know like Jason said and then if you guys can't get that going you know then we look at maybe doing it as a as a you know streamed content i love the idea of it doing streamed content because it gives me content but uh you know there's a couple like a couple of wrinkles there like what if i'm you know i'm trying to get my i'm trying to get a commission done or something like that and it's like oh i can't paint tonight because you know we're gonna do the lord of the rings thing so there's a lot of, a lot of stuff to consider you know um but it sounds super fun. And I, you know, in general, I would love to have, you know, a, a, you know, a, a group of, I know a lot of people stream RPGs, and that would be uh, super fun. Oh, yeah, best to play GameCraft. We got to go back to GameCraft, man. We got to go back to GameCraft. In fact, I wonder... Maybe we should play, maybe I should play Aaron instead of playing at CQ. You should see if he wants to meet me at GameCraft tomorrow. That could be a thing. Look at this Bane swollenness, man. Bane! He's so swole. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> the one thing about about doing super swollenness uh, skin like this is you don't have to make glazes. You can actually just paint it because it's so buff. It's so swole. But yeah, it it's definite. It's like that's what I've wanted to do for a while. I was hoping we could do. You know, we did it for a little while with Shadows of Brimstone, but that just became too much. It just became like too much to shuffle all that around, keep track of everybody's stuff. Um, you know, Super Dungeon Explorer. If they had a campaign mode, like they said they were going to, those crooks. Like, if they did that, uh, that would be pretty sweet, too, because that's, all, you know, it's a lot more casual. It's easier to keep track of stuff. Dude, what did I... Okay. Is this Bane on Venom? When I'm playing Traveler D&D and Star Trek Adventures RPG, you're painting minis. That's nice. I mean, 
I, that would be cool too. I would love it, you know, if we had like a a DM or somebody that could that could run RPGs on this channel while I just paint. That would be pretty sweet, right? Because then I could just, you know, I would just be a a participant. Somebody else is, you know, manning all the stuff, and I could continue to paint. That would. That's another. That's another really good idea, Shadow Cat. So there, yeah, I like that idea. You guys, you guys do so. What's going on there with that? Why is there like a flap of skin right there? That's weird. Alright, skin's almost done. There's one last thing we have to do, and it's, it's, uh, I don't do a full skin wash anymore. I do, like, a very targeted wash, okay? So, uh, so you take your handy-dandy, uh, sunburn flesh, and you need, if I could find it, I gotta find it. I probably shouldn't have started to explain something that I don't have the materials for. <laughs> I don't know. Alright. Alright. How to make a how to make a really, really quick and dirty wash. It's real simple. Four drops of thinner. Now you could do this with water, but I think thinner medium is much better because it just it you know flows out better. So four drops of that, one drop of sunburn flesh, and it makes this perfect little makes this perfect little uh, wash that matches so nicely with your. Okay. Right, you just want a little bit of shade. Right. Right around where the veins are. And you want it in the crevices of all where all the muscles tuck in, basically, right? Where the muscles insert into one another. You want that. Right, and it's just a nice soft way of blending in all your, all your your good skin, all that good work you did on your skin. Okay, it's just real nice and subtle. You play via roll twenty, nice. I just you know, I don't know what's wrong with me, but. I don't, I don't know that I'm, you know, even though, I, even though I like to do voices and that kind of stuff, I don't know that I'm much of an RPGer these days. Which is kind of, just, I know that sounds a little strange, but, all right. Pretty cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started on the massive amounts of armor that this guy has, okay? So the easiest way to do this would be to wash the whole thing first to get some outline, and then we start playing. So I'm going to... Uh-oh. One sec. All right. 
lining up my game for tomorrow. <laughs> Everyone, stop paying attention to my feed while I line up my game for tomorrow. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Let's do so let's make a let's make a quick liner out of airbrush thinner. We're gonna take some airbrush thinner and some black ink. Okay, a little bit of black ink and airbrush thinner. And the idea here is uh, I just wanna see what this detail looks like at first. Here we go. All right. Okay. And now, so I'm not intending to make this a full wash just yet. Uh, I will actually include a wash a little bit later into this process. But right now, I just want to see. Right. This is all I'm wanting to see is this. I want to see where all these little armor plates break out. Right. So this is just a real cheap, quick and dirty little liner here to give me an idea where where all this stuff is going to land. And it actually does serve a little bit of a purpose as we go into the a little deeper into the painting process. All right. So this, it's kind of a cool, like, there's a little bit of a chrome thing. Yes, there is a vent. How did you have excellent eyesight? Shadow Cat, thank you for picking up on that. Um, right, so. Right, so I'm just going to get all this, basically all this outlining in. I mean, you could do, like, if you want to see this ventriloquist done, you could just do that, too. You could see it. There it is. See, the, you, I mean, there's a lot of um, Arkham references here. So there's the ventriloquist dummy. This is uh, the Riddler's cane. Uh, you obviously have an Arkham Asylum. Um, you know, you have that whole, you have this whole thing here that he's breaking through. All right. Let me see. I'm on my sound just seen and just seen on the Tommy guy. Oh, okay. Well, that's even more impressive if you're on your cell and you saw that. That's pretty damn impressive. Look at this Bane. 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 I know he doesn't sound like that, but I just like to do anything. Any excuse to do, like, Schwarzenegger, I like to do. Bain! Where's Bain? Let's just, let's just put this liner down as shadow down here. Just let it dry. Let's just, let's just use it since we've got it out. I'm not going to put it on uh, Riddler's cane. 
Dude, I may have to buy myself a Riddler crew. Because the Rid the the Riddler deck just came out. And Chris was telling me about it and he said it was pretty cool. Alright. Awesome. Okay, cool. All right. So now the downside to doing that is you got a lot of time while that dries. <laughs> so work on other stuff for a minute while all that dries. So let's work on uh, Scarecrow a little bit here. Uh, Scarecrow is very very simple design. Looks like he's just sort of brown and burlap and brown. Let's find some browns. Bye. All right, this is a good color for him. Let's just find good colors for, this is a good color for him. And then you just need like, kind of like a generic brown for his pants. The old brown. Muddy brown, that may be too, too dark. Lol. Coppery orange. Ooh, that's, I haven't tried these colors yet. Let's try, let's try the, that's a weird, le that leather brown almost looks like a, this almost looks like a skin color. All right. Yeah, that is almost like a skin color. It's a great color. It's just god awful on Scarecrow. Well, I mean, not god awful. Let's try it. It looks like, to me, this looks like deep skin tone. Yeah, that looks like deep skin tone. I'm not even going to finish applying that. That's just wrong. It's not the right. Like, oh, I mean, it's. It's not not the right color. No, sir. It's not what we wanted. Let's just throw some gray into that. That's a much better color. Okay. Yeah, luckily Scarecrow does not have much in terms of uh, detail. So, he's just raggedy dude. So, we'll knock out Scarecrow here. And now we can do He has kind of like a military green style top uh, So I'm going to use this camouflage green And then we'll just shade it down to the appropriate green It's actually, this is very much like a, like an olive green, and we'll, we'll shade it to be more like a, like a military green. But, I mean, it's Scarecrow. This is gonna, right, I'm not, you're not exactly doing award-winning painting on this type of sculpt. You're trying to get major colors down at first. Okay, 
So there's that. Okay. Oh, even so, even Scarecrow's feet are that like burlap color, right? And he has, you know, slightly darker pants. So let's do that. Uh, so yeah, let's try out this muddy brown as the pants. It's a little dark, but I can I can live with that. All right, and then we're gonna start. We'll start messing with the armor plating, which is like probably the coolest part of Bat Bain. Bain the Bat. He's the Bat and the Bain. You think you are powerful, but you are not a bad pain. In fact, these are very similar colors to what Bane's boots are going to look like. Let's see how this brown dries. I hope it doesn't dry too... It doesn't dry too glossy. Okay. All right. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a good uh, weekend. Weekends are just way too short for me now. You know, with the way my weekly schedule is, it's kind of insane now. All right. I mean, I could, I might as well just do the, I might as well just base color the boots in right now since I got the color right here. So let's just do it. Time to paint pain boots. Oh, it's leather too. Okay, so Bane boots are really just brown on brown on brown with white straps. Okay. Yeah, hopefully, with any luck, I can get in some Guild Ball tomorrow. That'd be sweet. Always, always a little dicey, especially after I gamed today. You know, if you game one day during the weekend, it makes trying to game a second day much harder. Um, the only thing I got going for me is I, this weekend, I bought a new router. I bought a new router, so we'll find out around 10 o'clock if this router keeps me online or if it boots me the way I got booted uh, the other night trying to paint the mini of the month. It's not bad. All right. Agree, got to make tomorrow count. I feel like I'm working all the effing time. Yeah. That's the problem with working at home. So you just you're just always working, right? Your boss can call you at like seven thirty at night, eight o'clock at night. And like whatever. I know you're there. You know? You don't have anywhere to go, so 
my boss tries not to do that to me because I have a really cool boss. But sometimes it happens, right? So I actually am using that leather brown there to do a little base coat on ventriloquist dummies. face. This brown this brown's taking a little bit longer to dry. We'll see how that goes. Alright. Okay, so now we're going to start working on the actual like non-metallic steel uh, bits for, the, for Bane's armor here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go with some uh, we're going to go with a color called Griff Charger Gray. And that's going to give me a nice kind of bluish tinge to start off with. <clears throat> okay, you can already see. Right, you can you can already see where I'm going with this. Because that's a very cool, it's a very cool looking blue, like bluish color. So it's going to come down to that and like how hard I can trace these, uh, the shadows. What's the thing on Bane Bats? This thing right here? I don't know. I do not know. It's a good question. It's like it seems to be like a, just like another um, fitting back there. Maybe it's for uh, maybe it's for his you know maybe has a it, it's a respirator or something. I don't know. I do not know. All right. Hey, what's up, Cameron? How you doing, dude? Welcome to the feed. Just painting some Batman. Man, I kind of want a Joker. I mean, a Riddler crew. Damn it. But I, I'm super broke right now. I'm, I've got to save all my money. Um, uh, last week was an ex extremely expensive week for, for me and my living. My, my way of life got very expensive last week. So trying to recuperate a little bit. You know, get some commissions done. Could be a Venom pump. It could be. Yeah, could you could be, you know, pumping a Venom dose back in there. All right, so now I want a, yeah, bat, bat uh, now I want like a really, really slight blue, uh, like a, I want a very slight blue highlight, okay? And when I first put this down, it might look a little too bright. If you... Get the Riddler crew, go straight up the highlighter. Yes. That's, I love, I don't know. I love that look. I know people think it's dorky, the like bright green leotards. I think it, I think it's awesome looking. It, obviously it would look really stupid in real life, but that's kind of the point, right? In the comic books, you know, when you do these comic book art characters, you could get away with stuff like that. So, all right.
So I'm going to put in this blue highlight, and it might scare you, and it might shock you, and it might be a total failure. But I'm going to try. We're going to we're going to see how it goes. This dry brush is starting to really die on me. Maybe tomorrow I can. The 1960s show. Yeah, but the night model ones, they're super cool. I love Kel. I love the quizzes. I just, Riddler Crew is just so, like, bright and super thematic. It's like one of the coolest, brightest looking crews. Matt was working on a Riddler crew. I wonder, wonder if, if he ever uh, finished it. Maybe he can come out sometime when we're playing Batman. All right. So if I do this just lightly enough, maybe I can pull it off, right? Maybe I can get away with this, and you guys won't ridicule me. Stop making fun of me. I mean if it if the detail looks good enough maybe I don't have to shade it down maybe it just looks good like that you know sometimes if I can if I can keep this soft enough which it looks like I can you know maybe it does not need Maybe it doesn't need to go super dark. Because this is going on like almost perfectly. I, don't wanna, I actually don't want to jinx it. Man, this is come, going on extremely well. Who would have thought? A little Levadon blue and a little magic blue highlight. What starts with P, ends in E, and we'll have hundreds of letters all over the floor. Haha. -ha. That's pretty funny. I actually don't need another crew for Batman. I'm pretty set for crews. I want to play more uh, Doom Patrol anyway. I just, I want to put together like a really cool looking Riddler crew, but I don't know if that I, I don't know if I want to keep it, if that makes sense. You just want to like put it on the board and go, oh, that's cool, and then sell it. All right. It's looking pretty good, actually. Post office. <laughs> yes, he is grabbing Scarecrow. Now I need a. I need to start working up these really um, light blue grays to uh, punch the the metal part of the of all that armor up. Did you, Shadowcat, did you get that riddle directly from the 60s TV show? Because it sounds like you did. 
It sounds like specifically from that show. Which I loved. I loved that show. And Riddler was great on that show. Actually, I, I, I'll say from the 60s show, I pretty much loved all of the villains on that show. And that includes both Catwomen. Alright, so let's let's make some decisions here. Does that this is does this looks pretty good. This is a pretty good color and I could probably So I do want to make a glaze out of this. Cause again we're making steel from the Batman Nightfall audio drama. Alright, so I'm going to go one to one with glaze medium. All right. You can see that that kind of bluish color going going down. It's a very very blue steel. Blue steel, La Tigra. It's all the same look. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Okay. Batman Mask of the Phantasm is on Netflix. Watch it last night. Took me back. Nice. This is an excellent miniatures game, by the way. It's just, you know, the only thing I would warn you is it's Night Models. Night Models is very quirky and very Spanish. So just bear that in mind. Maybe I paint Shadow Cat, maybe to your point here, maybe I paint in a little, like for this right here, maybe I paint in a little bit of a, like a bright green um, little tinge right there, like it's a venom injector. I'll get you the link and share it. Nice. You know, Nelson, to your point, though, like what we were talking about earlier, I do want to have kind of more, I want to have more interactive streams where, you know, it's painting, like we can do, I could continue to do painting, but, you know, I'd like to have guests on, um, you know, like, like guests and, and topics and that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, what I, what I really would be looking for ultimately, what would be best would be, you know, some sort of co-host that can handle, you know, running all that stuff. But, it, you know, how can I expect to have a co-host? I can't, it's not like I'm going to pay someone to co-host my show for me. You know what I mean? But that's, I'd been looking for a co-host for for honestly for for years and years now like just like every ever since i started uh really doing plate painted and not socal malifo live 
Um, for those of you who remember that show, that was a dope show. Um, yeah, ever since I started doing Plant Painted, you know, my hope was that one day I could have like a co-host that, uh, you know, was charismatic and had good, I had someone I have very good banter with that we could talk a lot and, um, you know, and would be entertaining to watch, right? Like, one of the ideal people back in the day would have been Jake, right? Um, he would have been a great co-host, and he was extremely good as... He was kind of the de facto co-host when it was Play It Painted Live anyway. Uh, let's see. I feel like it's Bushido. It's a cool game. Bottles are hard to get a hold of for no reason. Is it like that? Um, it's... What, what I would say about uh, Batman, the Batman Miniatures game is that it is a game that always feels like it's between editions. Okay? And what I mean, what I mean by that is that it can be very uh, difficult to put together... Uh, for example, to put together a crew, it can be challenging because you're going to see all these characters that you like, that you want, and you're like, oh... Well, can't he be in a crew with this person? And can't this be with a crew with this person? And, you know, how cool would that be? Uh, and those are all super cool, fun thoughts. The problem is, when you get the models, you're going to have models that are across potentially three different, um, three different editions of the game. And some of them are going to have model uh, rules just for first edition, so they'll be obsolete. Other ones will have, uh, you know, models or rules for third edition, but not complete rules for third edition. Some of them will have rules for third edition, and, you know, then they'll, they'll be second edition models. Some of them will be third edition models with rules for third edition, which are very cool too. Uh, but, you know, in order to get the third edition for third edition models, you're having to buy big boxes of stuff, like full crew boxes. You can't piece things together the way you used to in previous editions. Um, sometimes finding all the rules to get together and in one place can be very difficult. And then with regards to the cards, uh, if you're not buying, you know, the latest and greatest um, third edition stuff, then you're, you know, climbing around websites and looking for, you know, people's uh, drop boxes, the people who, the who you know, the fans who really love the game that made, that converted second edition cards into third edition so that you could play all your favorite stuff, right? So it's, it's quirky. It's quirky and it's Spanish and it's not, it's very difficult to get into dry. I'll put it to you that way. If you lived in a small town and you wanted to get into Batman 3rd Edition because you thought it was super cool and you would be right, it is super cool uh, but you know you wanted to get started in your local, well you face a number of challenges right out of the gate like how am I going to get people crews how do I get at you know a complete set of the rules how do I uh How do I, um, you know, make sure that everything I have is up to date? How do I print all the stuff that I need to do? So, do I think it's worth the effort? Yes. <laughs> I do, actually. I do actually think it's worth the effort to do all of that. I do think that this game is that fun that I would, I would condone, I would act, actively condone doing that. I just would warn people, uh, you know, explicitly out of the gate, like, look, this is not easy. What we're asking for here is not easy. Uh, I don't, I don't know really anything about the crew faction cards yet, and uh, Nelson. But you know what Chris was telling me about the 
um, those crew cards is that uh, they they do all kinds of stuff about you know making your opponent um, use objectives or use their objectives or score objectives blind. There's all kinds of stuff there. Um, sounds esoteric. Yes, yes, that's a great and that's a that's actually a, a great word for you know describing how to get into this game is it's a yeah it's an esoteric game you um you know there's you have to you have to um do a little digging find the right resources you know there's plenty of fan the good news is there's plenty of fans online that can help you you know find what you need to find but the issue is, you know, you have to do that multiple times. Okay, like, you know, you finally get through it. You get your, your crew put together. You get your decks built. You get, you know, you know what you want. You want to play this. You, and you've got it all figured out, right? And you're ready to go. Well, now you got to get somebody else to go through that entire journey as well. Right? Now you got to get... Oh, do you like you like Batman too, right? You want to play Batman with me? Okay. Well, here's the drop box where all your cards are located. Here's the crew builder. Put your crew together. Here's where you find, you know, here's where you would find an order all that stuff that you suddenly now want. You know what I mean? You got to do all of that twice at least. And then and then, you know, and then ideally more players come and you okay. And you, you set up a Facebook group and say, okay, here's the link to the Dropbox. Here's, you know, all these. And luck, I'm lucky in this area that, you know, a lot of people uh, support me and they want to play games that I want to play. So, so I'm very lucky that, you know, I can get, you know, even just a small amount of people to come, you know, experience these games with me. That's super awesome, right? Um but your mileage may vary. You're the only, you may be the only person in your area trying to get people into Batman. And, you know, it, it could take, trying to build up rapport with people takes time. I'm a big uh, rapport guy, right? This is, this is me. I like, when I, uh, you know, when I'm a patron at an establishment, you know, whether that be uh, a restaurant or uh, a bar or, you know, you know, a place where I get my hair cut, anything like that. When I have or, or a hobby store, I like to have rapport with people. I like to have like, uh, you know, I, I I'm like, OK, I really like this place. For example, let's take Gamecraft. I really like this place. I'm going to be and I decide consciously like I'm going to be a regular at this place so I go to the place and you know and I start to slowly build rapport with the bartenders with the servers and all that kind of stuff um, because that's all that stuff is great for when you know it, it it not only makes you feel at home with all these places but it's it's just great for when you know you've got new people coming in and it helps establish rapport with lots of people, right? Right. So let's say you, uh, you know, you go, you're going to Comic Quest, and you're really interested in miniatures, and you know, like, oh, you know, I want to play Malifaux or something like that, and they tell you, like, oh, you know, the, the People behind the counter are like, oh, you know, the, the person, you should talk to Octave about that kind of stuff. Who's Octave? Well, he's this guy, right? And I go into that store. You know, a lot of people know me there. Um, you know, I'm I'm on a friendly basis with a lot of people there, not just staff, but whatever. It, it's very reassuring if you're that person that's about, that's considering joining a game. And you see how much stability the, like, the, we'll, we'll say, we'll call myself the organizer, you see how much stability and how much rapport he has in that shop. Oh, Octave must come in here a lot. Oh, that means I can rely on Octave to be at the store a fair bit. He's not just going to up and, you know, punk out or move away or whatever, 
right? And then you have confidence that that person is going to be around, that they're going to continue to promote their game, uh, the game that you want to play too, and you'll be able to, you know, see some activities. Probably the number one thing that people that want to play miniature games are concerned about is, you know, are other, am I going to be able to find other people to play this game with? So, you know, having rapport at the shops definitely helps kind of establish the the trust that is needed that you are going to continue to support a game and that you can help um, build a a local meta for your game. So, anyway, I'm actually shocked. We made it to 10 o'clock, knock on wood, and I have not been disconnected yet. That's good. That is good, folks. But yeah, an octave can help me <laughs> can help me learn said game. Yeah, pretty. Much. I mean, yeah, that's that's one thing, right? I like this game. He likes this game. You know, he's in the shop a lot. He'll probably be there, and he can help me learn it. So yeah, it's all part of the, it's all part of that, that formula, I guess, that system of like, you know, that's why you have, that's why I have rapport at these shops is because it's very useful. This talk makes me miss SoCal Malfo. I could walk into Monster on any day really and there would be Malfo going on. Yeah, that, the, that was, you know, what was the old Empire that was good stuff. Uh, you know, when it all came apart, one of the things that was really upsetting to me, and I'll, I'll just say it here, with no, with really no malice, so I hope it, you know, I hope this doesn't get misread or anything, but when the whole thing was coming apart, and, you know, I told people, you know, and, and I was pretty upset about it, most of us were, I, I, I warned people, I said, hey, we're not... This isn't common, okay? This this community that we built, this is not a common thing. Don't throw it away so casually. And I feel like that was not heeded by certain people. I, I feel like that was not heeded until it was too late. Um, I can't say that there has been at least uh, two people that who I said that to who came back uh, to me later and said, you know what, you were right about that. This was this this was unique. This was unusual. We should have we could we, we should have, have have taken a little better care there at the end, because at the end, I feel like we we're you know we were so upset about what was going on that we were starting to just destroy things that were more than just the Malifo side of our community. We were destroying, you know, we were burning some bridges with people and things like that that, that, would, that would take years to recover. And it was the most heartbreaking thing because it was just such a good, it was just such a good active community. It was, it was you know, I, I, I wouldn't use the word healthy. I would use the word active. Because even though we were super active and super fun and whatnot, um, there were some, you know, there there were definitely some toxic elements to our community that uh, that could have used a, a little bit of attention for sure. All right, what do you think? Looking looking pretty good. Now we're gonna. So what I'm gonna do is you saw how I did that liner earlier. So now I'm gonna take. Uh, blue ink and I'm gonna throw it into that liner and we're gonna do it again okay so blue plus black it's gonna have a little bit of black a little bit of blue here's my blue ink I hope it's not too blue hope this is not Chris's blood all right Let's drop a little bit of blue in here. Oops. But yeah, that was those were crazy days, dude. Throw 
Those were days when, like, brass on the Arkham sign, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I'm looking at the... It's kind of it's kind of a dark steel in the art. I could do a, a brass on there. I'm having too much fun, like, messing around with this, with his cool armor. But yeah, those were the days when it was like, you know, we, there was so much activity going on in the region where we could go, we could pick like, you know, almost any shop and go, oh, you know, what do we want to, what do we want to hit up tonight? Especially in Orange County, there were like three, there were like three or four different shops um, that had Malifaux Knights. And we were like, oh, we'll, we'll go here Tuesday, we'll go here Wednesday, we'll go to this shop Thursday, right? And we would do all of them. And it was it was always cool. And we just always had this like crazy influx of people coming in all the time. Is that too blue? You thought the Mad Hatter's hat was on the base? Could be. Oh, there's a head right here. What's is that a head? What is that? Oh, it's a it's a statue head. It's not an actual head. Okay. Right. So. Play around with this blue here. But yeah, that was definitely, uh, you know, one of the more unique communities we'd ever built. An old man you like to reminisce. <laughs> that was, you know, it, Cameron... People hear us talking about this, and they think we're, like, lying. They think we're, like, full of shit. <laughs> that this wasn't a thing, right? That it, that it, there's no way, it, there's no way it could have been like that. A gaming community? There's no way it was like that. No, man. I mean, you'd have to talk to the, the other people uh, that were part of this community. But every time... It's, it's, you know, you can talk to, talk to anybody, man, anybody that was part of that. You could talk to Paul Luna, you could talk to Phil, you could talk to, uh, you know, hell, you could talk to Billy of you. You could talk to anybody that was part of that community back then. And, and inevitably, everybody just like gets a smile and like, oh man, I remember that, you know, I remember how crazy that crew was, um, you remember some of the, um, just some of the most unique stuff that we did, you know, as part of the, as part of our community and just how like crazy active we were. It really is, like you think about it, it really is like, wow, we did, we did something like nuts like that before any of that stuff was really a thing. It was like gaming Shangri-La. <laughs> yeah. It was, you know. I know, I, I can say for me and Jake, it was like, it, 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 it's, it, it almost brings a tear to the eye. I think with Jake, I think it does. If you talk to I bet if you talk to Jake long enough about it, it would bring a tear to his eye. Pretty sure it would. <laughs> I think the top hat is behind the left foot. Oh yeah, right there. Look at that. Nice catch. Dude, you have like laser eyes. How are you seeing all that stuff? Can you please tell me what else is on this model? Because I need to know. Alright. Cool. So we got the blue down. So now we get the black back down. Uh, I'm going to actually think what I'm going to do is I actually want to use, I want some of that black to be kind of in the middle and like breaking up light and that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to do the liner style 
thing that I did before. I'm actually going to go in with some proper armor wash. Oh yeah, no, Jake. Not a, uh, J Jake has been back on here, uh, you know, recently, like uh, two or three months ago. He hopped on, and, and we spent, you know, the better part of an hour and a half, maybe even two hours, talking about Malifo. We talked about, you know, we we talked about everything. We talked about the good times and the and the bad times. Like we talked about. <laughs> We were like the rock band that went out of control there at the end. You know, we talked about that too. Like, we talked about how, you know, the whole thing kind of came came undone at the end there. And, you know, some things that we could have done better at the end. Not that we could have ever saved our own, you know, we couldn't have, we couldn't have saved the, the whole community. But we could have done more to keep a little bit more unity as everything started to to come apart right we were it, it, you know and i don't want to i feel like there's a part of me that's in that situation again with guild ball where it's like i don't want us just to be this like you know to do what we did before and go through this like nomadic phase where we where everybody shopped different games and every you know we made it our some of us made it our duty to try to save everybody with a single game and at the end of the day you know we ended up making uh socal tabletop because there really was no single answer and i i i made that group with the idea that we would always be shopping for games, but what really mattered was that, you know, we had this activity and we had this community that understood that, like, okay, when some of us get into a game, that we spin off that, you know, that we spin off that game into its own Facebook group, and then it becomes, you know, SoCal Arena Rex or SoCal uh saga socal any of those other ones right and that you know we come back to it and that's that's how the whole network runs it's it's with that explicit understanding of this is how this is how we're going to do things and we're not you know it, it's it, this is a niche community but it's a very tight knit community it's a very um it's a very passionate community right and that's the word I would use for us. That's that's what we were. Do you remember uh, when we were all we were all at my old place? We were all down here for Octacon. Do you remember that? We were uh, we, we were all down here for Octacon. We were singing karaoke and you know throwing drinks around, and we had a we had like everybody on the couch, right? We we had I had that. That green couch that everybody would just eventually pass out on if you sat on it too long, and uh, and I had you know we had the the karaoke setup we had like tables out in the middle of the room and that kind of stuff, uh, and I just remember like kind of spontaneously people going around the room going man I love this I love this group I love you know I, I hope we never split up I remember uh, Laura saying that specifically like she was just she was like i never really thought i would have this fun little family like this i remember her saying that specifically and that was like super sweet her sister came baked us a cake you remember that <laughs> that was cr like that's crazy that's that was your that was our gaming group man like you that's why like at the end i was like hey guys you can't you don't casually throw this away this is not you're not going to get, so, you know, if you think that we could just easily remake this, you're, you're wrong. Like, this is, this is a rare occurrence that you have people, like, the, the, the kind of group that we had and how, I hate this, I really hate using this word, but how diverse we were in all of our backgrounds and all of our, you know, all of our viewpoints and where all of us came from. But it was like, 
you know, what are we going to do next? I know, let's do this stupid thing. And everyone be like, oh, the stupid thing is amazing. <laughs> that was our crew. That was our crew. What are we going to do? We're, let's do this stupid thing. Oh, man, stupid thing is the best thing ever. <laughs> That's kind of how we operated. That is literally, we would just do stupid shit, and people would think it's amazing, <laughs> right? Remember when we did that tournament based on Bishop. That was, uh, Jake threw that tournament. It's one of the funniest tournaments ever, right? This is when Bishop was a terrible model. <laughs> Octacon, yes. It would be a section in a Wargaming history book. New gamers would have to study it. There would be a test. I, I definitely think that there are a lot of really good lessons in what we did. You know, good and bad, right? Lessons that you could learn. Here's great things that we did that worked super well, um, you know, for, for promoting a game and promoting a gaming community, right? Here's some things that we did extremely well. Here's some things that we did rather poorly. Like, it would be great to just, you know, look at those things kind of soberly and honestly and go, yeah, that was awesome. That's what, that's, you know, that's one of the things that worked. And no, this one didn't work. And this was not a good idea. And it was bad for this reason, right? Yeah, the Bishop Tournament, that was the funniest thing. Like, it was the, it was arguably one of the dumbest worst formats for a tournament ever because you had to take the dumbest model in the game no matter what you did you had to include him in your crew <laughs> and com and we were thinking like oh man competitive players are going to turn up their noses we're going to get like four people to show up no one's going to care <laughs> nah it was a well-attended tournament. People were like, "Ah, oh, I can't wait. Let's see what... Let's play Bishop versus Bishop. This is going to be great. <laughs> you know, that... It, it's stuff like that that you're like, man, that was just freaking cool. <laughs> yeah. But... You can't see anything else on the base. Okay. Should I... Should I just back off like that and give you... <laughs> Give you some time to look around. There is a lot going on in this base. This is a very... Uh, this is a very intricate model. Yeah. But, you know, with... Guild Ball is... is um... It's a, it was a much more localized thing, right? It is really Go Ball here was we have we had an okay kind of community around the Southern California area, but you know a lot of it was really kind of centralized around Comic Quest, and you know our 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 meta at Comic Quest. So um, so really it's about it's about kind of keeping that group active and just enjoying the game for what it is and and you know we'll, we'll play other games we'll play Malifaux for sure we'll play Batman but you know not everybody not that entire crew will be on for every game there are already people like Kevin doesn't he 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 does not he's not interested in jumping into Batman he wants to play Malifaux Conversely, we're going to have people that don't want to play Malifaux that want to play Batman, right? Like Chris. No, Chris actually, never mind. Chris wants to play both. Um, but we may have some folks like that. It's like, oh, I want to play this game, not this game. Uh, you might want to play um, Infinity Code 1. Maybe I don't play Infinity Code 1, right? I want to play Aristea. Not everybody wants to play Aristea. So it's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. And the main thing is like, how do we... How do we ensure that we, as a group, just continue to stay active and enjoy uh, what we're doing and that kind of thing? I remember, too, the wooden spoon, where me and Chris were literally competing to lose as many games because we wanted the wooden spoon compliments. <laughs> yeah, remember Gabe? Uh, Gabe still has some of those wooden spoons, too. It's super. F he was telling me about it the other day. Um, 
I, you know, he's like, hey, man, I, he showed me, like, stuff. He's like, I still have this SoCal Malifo stuff. So cool. <laughs> We're like, ah, oh, that's great. Alrighty. I should have an, I am supposed to have an Umber watch here that I wanted to try out. Yeah, we, we could talk about you know, the, we'll call them, like, seriously, if, if my gaming career, if my, my miniature gaming career, um, you know, was Berserk, then Mal SoCal Malifaux was the Golden Ark. For the, <laughs> I know that was a lot of references, but those of you who watch Berserk, can under or, or follow the berserk manga they know they now know what i mean dude i had a wash here that i totally wanted to use good shit <laughs> right if you if you wanted to like if you really wanted to get into the lore the lore of uh octave's socal gaming career then uh then yeah, SoCal Malifo was the that's the Golden Ark. It, it, that has the, the the three movies about it. Damn. I guess it's not here. No, there it is. <laughs> All right, we're gonna throw a little shade on uh, on Scarecrow. Man, those Vallejo washes are so thick. And that is not a compliment. I like how thick is a compliment now. <laughs> Euros don't agree with us. Euros do not use... The English do not use the word thick as a compliment. All right. So you can see this little umber wash. It's actually kind of nice wash. It's actually kind of nice wash. Throw a little thinner in it. It's not bad. It's giving me the, that duller appearance that I'm hoping for. A little dirtier on Scarecrow. Okay. And then the next two hours will be painting the base. <laughs> Actually, what I have to do before we give up on the rest of this is I have to do really sharp um, line highlights on the armor. The armor is a little on the blue side. It's a little blue. Okay, up here, right? Oh. Whoa. If you're going to use green in the thing in his back, you may want to put some green on the veins. It's a good point. Like he just took a Venom dose. He doesn't have it in the studio art, so I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't decided. I haven't decided yet. It's not a bad thought, though. I generally, you know, if my, if my uh, client was in the chat, they could advise me if that's what they wanted. And I could totally go for it. And I, I normally, you know, when in, as a default, I won't break from 
the uh, the box art unless unless I warn the person ahead of time or unless they ask me to. So I think in this case I'm just going to hold off on doing that. Whoa. Wild West Exit. Oh, no, one of my friends asked me about WWX. Um, I mean, it's still a thing, I guess, but I haven't seen it played in years. I picked up the rule book uh, a couple of years ago and looked at it, and I was like, meh. Not impressed. Not impressed. The minis look cool. The problem I have with that game is the minis, it, they have they have GW syndrome. Like they look really cool, but they're all sort of faceless and nameless. Everything looks, it it doesn't it lacks character. If it if you know what I mean, like yeah, it it's like technically perfect looking, and there's nothing wrong with them. They just have like everything just looks sort of faceless and nameless, and it's all. And while it all looks cool, it doesn't, it just doesn't have the kind of character uh, that we would, that I, I like to see in these. Man, what happened to I? In Her Majesty's name, IHMN. That's it's still a thing. It's you know it still has a pretty. Um, I wouldn't say a big following, but it has a very active following. People that like to um, make custom crews and share hobby. So it has a bunch of that. It just in the end, it the where it kind of fell apart from for us is that it. We're, you know, we're uh, we're not those garage style gamers, so we wanted more like official release of stuff. And the game mechanics were, they were they were kind of lacking at the end of the day. It wasn't. It's not that the game mechanics were bad. It's just they they never they never quite hit a point to where they felt like it felt like a complete game. If that makes sense. It was always sort of like, oh, and we're just going to kind of flub this rule. And, you know, here's all the modifiers. And I'm like, well, you know, it'd be, it would be nice to take a little modern game design to this and streamline it. Right? Make it a little bit easier. Maybe make the game a little bit more game feeling. If that makes sense. IHMN mechanics are very simple. Right? Move here. Roll to shoot. Rolled a hit, rolled a... Like, it wasn't... I don't know. It didn't have the fancy stuff that we have these days. Playbooks, you know, activation keys, um, states. It didn't have stuff like that. And therefore, it never... For us, it never felt like a full game. It was like, oh, well, we're going to play this because it's fun... It's really, IHMN is really about, um, you know, getting, like, oh, I'm going to buy a bunch of Squid Face people, and I'm going to make my Squid Face cool, uh, my fit Squid Face crew, and people are all going to think that's super cool and whatever, and you post it on Facebook, and people are super happy about it, and you're like, oh, here's my jungle pulp crew, and that's really cool, too, and everyone's happy about it, whatever, but it's not like you break them out and, like, put them on the table and go, wow. Now we're really going to have some fun with these crews. It never really worked that way. It was always just sort of, here's, you know, here's IHMN and yay. You know, <laughs> it never, it just never got to that point, I guess. <clears throat> There's a little bit of blood on this model. He has, he has some blood. On his armor, which is, it's really cool because it's like, uh, 
it's like he had he's actually been fighting in his armor and um oh man that's not good this is not a this umber is not a good wash on this I actually need something darker um no we'll use a little white wildwood I guess There we go, yeah. This is just lets me give shadow. There were like three expansions that came out for IHMN2. Which I was like, you don't really need expansions. <laughs> you just, you can just keep making up stuff. But that's, it's, I guess I'm glad that they made expansions because it, you know, they kind of making it more into like a full fledged game. All right. Just still. Let's paint in these, uh, let's paint in all this base detail. Actually, wait, first I want to paint in, I'm going to take some red, some red wash, some red shade, and use it as, actually, no, I don't want, I want to use, uh, I want to use, like, dried blood or something. I guess I could use this. Something. Should be fine. There's fresh blood. I need dried blood. <laughs> you may pick one of those just to paint up. There, I think these are limited run. These might be hard to find. I want to know which game Octave is willing to play. Star Wars, Warhammer 40k, or War Machine. Oh, if I had to play one of them? Um, it, oh, it wouldn't be 40k. It wouldn't be 40k, mainly for the price. And mainly just because I'd been down that road, and I'd been there for so long, that I wouldn't pick up 40k. Um, I don't know that, I don't know that it would play, be War Machine. I would have so much fun painting War Machine because I've al I've always loved painting War Machine, but I don't, you know, I don't I don't know I don't see myself playing War Machine. I could probably like a lot because I like Guild Ball. There's probably a lot I could like about War Machine, right? All things considered. Um, so I guess that leaves me with Star Wars. Star Wars. I would play, I guess I, I, I would. I mean, the upside to Star Wars is I could probably really expand my client base <laughs> for commission painting. And Star Wars miniatures are significantly, I find them significantly easier to paint than, uh, than either War Machine or 40K minis, so... Right, so it wouldn't be wouldn't be the end of the world there. Dude, I could even put it I'm gonna put in a little I just really kinda tap in a little bit of extra red in places. It's kinda good. And it kinda helps it kinda helps balance the blue a little bit. Not bad. Yeah, hordes can be played with War Machine. You gave me... It's... I don't know. War Machine would be the... Of those systems, War Machine would by far be the, the one I would enjoy painting the most. And 
I think, I also think that we probably would be able to, um, you'd probably be able to make a, a decent War Machine meta, right, out of our group if we wanted to. We could probably do that. I just wouldn't want to rebuild. I wouldn't want to rebuild about a game that I just feel kind of meh about. Um, I could... I would um, want to play uh, if I if I played Star Wars. I would definitely not be an organizer. I would be a participant. I would go and play Star Wars and be like, ah, oh no, you got me again. Ah, you killed my stormtroopers. Oh, what's that? You like my paint job? <laughs> It would be mostly a marketing move if I played uh, Star Wars. Because then I would put that shit on my channel and paint it sarcastically. Star Wars! <laughs> hey guys, Star Wars is back! Yay! <laughs> I'd put that on here super sarcastically painted up. Hey, Star Wars! Guys, guys, this is the new Star Wars. I'd be like one of those... Uh, YouTubers that makes adult YouTubers that makes like videos for kids <laughs> guys <laughs> oh man warm words community actually made a new format called brawl machine smaller points and some band models I do like small points warm hordes oh, that was one of my biggest complaints like let me play small points man how's it going Chris by the way thank you <laughs> welcome to the feed I would, you know, for Warm Hordes, um, like I said, the main draw for me to, to play it in the first place was I really, really enjoyed um, painting Rhett. I just like all the, like, swooping. They were the one of the only factions that wasn't just endless amounts of bordering, right? <laughs> Hi, we're Menoth. We are Cream with bordering. Yes. Oh, what are you guys? Oh, we're we're Kador. We're red with bordering. Okay. Uh, who are you guys? Oh, we're Signar. What do you? We're different. We're say we're blue with gold bordering. What are you? We're Cricks. We're black, with green and silver bordering. <laughs> It would drive me crazy. Like, Rhett was the only one. Like, God, Dad, I don't have to outline every stupid little piece of armor on this faction. And they have stupid-looking space elves with power fists doing the hula. Okay, I'm in. I'll play that. And I always like elves, but these are elves with beards. They're weird. They're like ugly elves. <laughs> I was like, what? What is this? But... Their jacks look super cool, and their armor had this, like, cool white with, like, toothpaste green. They're, they're all right. It was cool. But, yeah. It, the one thing that drove me crazy about painting Warm Hearts, the other factions, was that it was always, here's our color, and then here's a silly amount of bordering that you have to do. I did have a really fun uh, Mercs army. Um, also, Legion was really cool to paint, but I can already hear people booing in the comment section. Boo! <laughs> Oh, cool. Brawl Machine. There, 
There you go. Cameron might play got he might play Brawl Machine. There's just a lot of red and rust kind of effect on this model. It's really kind of weird. I know, but people, I there was a Legion kind of had that same sort of, uh, what's the word, the same sort of stigma that, uh, you know, um, that Cricks had. Like, oh, this is, this is the strong faction. Look out, everybody. <laughs> uh, okay. I think what I do is I'm going to... Yeah. Let's do Riddler's Cane. Rebels are getting Mandalorians. I don't really care about Mandal. If I played uh, Star Wars Legion, my hope, my, my only saving grace would be is if Tusken Raiders became their own army. <laughs> <laughs> Called in sick at work today. Ate some bad ham. But you could tune into the team today. What's up, man? Brrr. Uh. Wait, no, the Tuscan Raiders were like, uh. <laughs> That's what I would. If I could just have Tuscan Raiders on Banthas, that would be pretty dope. Not gonna lie. <laughs> be pretty sick. I don't know what if if I had to play Star Wars Legion. I don't know. I I it I guess cuz because I would play it ironically, I guess I would play Rebels. <laughs> I would play Rebels and I would just have this really screwed up sense of justice. You'll see. We're going to free the galaxy. <laughs> I would make so many people mad during the tournament. <laughs> I'd probably get kicked out. I'd probably get kicked out pretty quick from, from the Legion uh, community. Gosh, dick, man. He said the whole movie is about Palpatine. <laughs> get him! <laughs> he would be so mad at me. <laughs> at least Nelson would think it was funny. He would sit there and <laughs> he'd have a good laugh. <laughs> Jason would shake his head. But they would be like three or four people super mad at me. <laughs> like, what, what's the matter? What? You're upset about Star Wars? You're upset about Star Wars, really? <laughs> Do you have to role play when playing Legion? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> no, you don't have to role play. But I, I would be charging across that board with my rebels. You'll see. We're going to blow up your Death Star. Yeah. Then you're going to build a bigger one. And then when we think we've won, we're not going to do shit. <laughs> Let you remake the whole thing again. But this time you could blow up whole, whole solar systems. You'll see. <laughs> Oh man, there would be some cool like stormtroopers, uh, stormtrooper sets though, right? I mean, Hoth stormtroopers are pretty sick. Like, I would want to rock that. That would be pretty sick. But I don't know about the rest of it. I mean, like, eh. 
Hey, what's up, Canvas? I heard Legion is an excellent game. I tried it that one time, and I was like, me better than 40k. <laughs> that was my that was my uh, my answer. I don't know. Nelson is our, is our Nelson is our Legion player, so he he could tell me. Nelson, you should. I, I'll let you sell me on the idea. Sell Legion to me, Nelson, and you know maybe I'll maybe I'll jump in and play it. He lines up his sand people in single player line and pretends to get cut for. <laughs> Man, I do love the sand people. They're so cool. Cheaper too. It's your, yeah, it's definitely cheaper than um, those other games. Unless I played Brawl Machine. This is the sell octave on a game that he would typically not have, that he would have zero interest in. The winner is going to be somebody that shows up in the chat and tells me to play Deep Wars. <laughs> Dude, you got to play Deep Wars. <laughs> Which, I gotta admit, Deep Wars has some of the coolest looking minis you've ever seen in your entire life. No lie. But, the guy who made Deep Wars, he needs to calm the F down. Like, his, <laughs> his rules were just, really, nobody has time. Like, life is too short, dude. I get it. You really understand Deep Wars. Good for you. But I don't want to play this game. There are too many rules. Like, the rules for movement were so confusing because it's a three-dimensional game where you have to, you know, because you're underwater, you have to deal with depth as well. It's only for you to troll other trigger Star Wars players. <laughs> it could be the first time I ever get kicked out of CQ. They show up for a Legion tournament <laughs> and just make fanboys super mad at me. Could be a thing. Screw that guy, man. <laughs> man, that would be awesome. You know that would be awesome. Alright. Forgot the back part of this armor there. Didn't Deep Boys use a song of here Blades and Hero? Not exactly. Not exactly. Uh, it used parts of it. Um, Deep Wars mini style, man. They they were awesome. And the fact that you could use old aquarium furniture as your terrain. Pretty awesome. I wonder how many people are looking up Deep Wars. <laughs> Legion has Wookiees. So Shadowcat is trying to sell me on Legion. I don't know. I think there's. I think I have an in, in, inherent um, bias against straight up battle games. I just find them kind of boring. Straight up like combat games, I find kind of boring. It's one of the reasons why like I find Infinity kind of boring. It's like oh, you know, it, it's just it's just another game where you know you run up, you you run up, you do some sort of combat, you roll some dice, and you're just trying to remove models. Trying to remove as many of the other guys' models, and you're trying to keep as many as your own models. Like that's that's like the gist of like most uh, miniature war games, right? That's kind of the definition around which most miniature war games are built. So, and I'm like, I want a little, I want my games to be a little bit different. That's why most of the games that you can see that I really like have different. Their objectives are are not like just war. 
Uh, which is why, you know, when someone's like, why did you do the I am a Wargamer challenge? I'm going to be like, but am I a Wargamer? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I don't, I've been thinking about it. Am I a Wargamer? I don't like, I don't like, like, traditional war games. They don't appeal to me. They're, they're just like, eh, you know. The only traditional war game that I've liked in recent memory is going to be Wrath of Kings. And the reason why I liked it was because the themes were so good and it played very quickly. Later, Shadowcat. Thanks for tuning in. Deep Wars has some boss minis. I have one of them human divers with the coolest name ever, Angus McBain. <laughs> uh, the Legion's objective based, though. Most scenarios you don't win by killing, it's about repairing objectives, secure the perimeter. Yeah, I mean, the, yes, but I mean, the main business of the game, though, Nelson, is still. Remove other models and uh, and minimize your own losses. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. How many? Let me answer this for me, uh, Nelson. How many uh, models is in a typical Legion army? Right? How many? How many pieces are we talking about? Right? How big is a, a Legion army? And I, I, I'm, I'm being serious here. Like, how many... I want to know, because... Like, how hard would it be for me to put together an army? Because I'll, I'll play it with you and Jason. And the movements are kind of goofy with the little sticks and all that, too. Oh. I don't know. It's just sort of eh for me. Okay. Cool. Alright, so now what I really want to do is I want kind of an umber. I want kind of an umber wash for the whole thing. Let that dry. We are definitely getting there, folks. Yeah. We could make this a regular segment on the show. You could be, uh, you know, I could invite, I could invite you guys one-on-one. -on -one and it would be like, sell me your game. Right? <laughs> like you get on here right we, we you get into discord and it's like octave i know you don't like this game but here's but i'm gonna give you an, uh, some reasons why i think you should play it and why i think you'll like it that would be kind of interesting let's see uh depends on faction but safe to say 40 to 50 models but if you hire extra heroes a bounty reduce your minions Tank eats about 25% of your costs. Yeah. 40 or 50 models. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Let's call it 30. Oof. Still. I don't know. I guess I'm lazy. I don't know, man. Let's, uh... Alright. Shark Tank. All right, so now so I'm going to make this like generic sort of dirt wash, this dirty wash that's going to go over the whole thing. And then we just highlight it. We're going to put some red down because, again, there's a lot of red. Is it lava? Like, what is? why is it red? Why does the bottom of his base look like it's about to... Like it's the bottom of a volcano. What is that about? Oh wow. Yeah, that that did muddy up the whole thing.
we have to do so we could have a schedule right tonight would be like i could maybe maybe we did it this way i would go okay you know sell me for the week would be the the you know the game you're supposed to sell me on this week i'll pick one and be like okay this week is going to be infinity so you can hop in to the chat and tell me about infinity why i'd like it and that kind of thing and then once a year it would be 40k which would be mostly kind of a joke episode um but i think people would i think people would take it seriously i wonder you know with andrew and, and kevin playing 40k i wonder if they would take a shot at trying to get me to play 40k i bet actually i bet most of you you guys might gang up and make a coalition and and to try to get me to play 40k oh you yeah okay so sean yeah mcp actually you would it wouldn't take much to convince me to play mcp mainly because i already have a set painted <laughs> like you just be asking me like just give up an afternoon and try it with me and i'd be like, okay that's that would be the end of that and yeah that's that's what would happen okay so now i'm gonna let this dry for a minute I'm going to shade this down a little bit. All right. Some of the lines weren't so weren't so good there. You can play 40k in secret. <laughs> All good. <laughs> that would be the funniest thing if I ever played 40k. I think I, I wonder how many people would take pictures of it and put it on my social media and tag me. Look, he actually does play 40K. <laughs> ah, that would be news. People would think the world is ending. You just want to play Legion because you hate strong female characters. That was awesome. <laughs> I can't. I can't even paint. I can't even paint. The, oh man. Honestly, 40k is better when you get in the narrative. You can't. Yeah, I. I can't. It's just to me. It just. It. I don't know. It's. I guess it's when I, when I, because when I finally, when I did finally quit 40k, um, it was just so exhausting, right? It was just so exhausting. I'm like, oh my, like it was such a relief when I got out of 40k. Finally, that crap is over with, right? And you started in, you know, and you started to like really see how much better your gaming experience could be playing these other games that's my main hang up and then you know when i even like i tell people when i see the 40k aesthetic it just looks so boring to me and i know that blows people's minds they're like what it looks so this stuff looks so cool it doesn't to me it looks boring everything in 40k just looks like furniture to me if you can imagine that's what it looks it looks like faceless nameless furniture it's like you took a person right you, you took a uh, you took a person you pumped them full of steroids and then you took them to antique roadshow and just dropped just all kinds of furniture and shit all over some like oiled up buff dude and you're like and here's a church pew here's a couple of statues Let's put this spike right here. Like, it it just, everything in 40K just looks like that to me, and it's so boring. That's just me, though. I mean, that's just me, and that's just how every, like, people have shown me, for people have been trying to get me to play 40K 
forever and ever and ever. I agree with everything you say. It's like, oh, sh look at this. And they would show me, I'm like, it's another space marine. Like, I, I've seen that. I've, I've seen that. The only thing, the, the space marines that I really like are like beakies. Because, you know, that reminds me of a, of a, of a more innocent time. Right, I get the nostalgia, like uh, like a lot of people. But when they show me this new shit, and they're like, "Oh, this is a pr Primaris Redemptor Victorious Sword," and all like this, this, what the shit? I just look at <laughs> what is this crap? I came and like if you look at this base, if you look at that base, that's what the 40k. That's if if you imagine that's what 40k looks like to me. This right here. Looks like another miniature game. Like, oh, look at this as a character. I really like it. This is this is a cool character. Yes, this is like what forty k looks like. Octave Vision, right there. Blur. That's just it's just stuff, right? Occasionally, a little piece comes out, and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. The rest of it. <laughs> if you don't wrap around the setting narrative, it's just like a generic war game. I only really play because the easiest thing. Oh, that's cool. You got six to seven players playing Malfo. Nice, man. Welcome to the feed, by the way. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I hope that I criticize 40k a lot, right? You guys know that. I, I criticize 40k a lot, but I sincerely mean this, that I hope that it is not, I hope that you guys don't take it seriously, that those of you who are 40k fans, I know that, you know, Nelson's a big Star Wars fan. He doesn't take it seriously when I talk trash on Star Wars, right? He, you just, after a while, you're like, yeah, Octave's a dick. It doesn't matter. Just don't pay attention to him when he's talking about stuff like that. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Now, Canvas, so you're saying, War, yeah, Warcry's pretty cool. I will, I've said this many times, that I would actually play Warcry if there was one faction I legitimately liked the look of. And I, I, I doubt it's ever going to happen. Because Warcry, all the Warcry stuff to me, and I painted the starter set. Uh, so I've, I painted, you know, that's a that's a reasonable sampling of, of the Warcry miniatures. I painted the the two-player starter set and all the little beasts and stuff that come in that. Um, yeah, it Warcry, Warcry to me, the, their aesthetic just seemed kind of like failed S&M. <laughs> It's kind of where I was like, yeah. it's grimdark, brother, grimdark. We can stab each other. Oh, it's going to be dark and evil. Like, uh, it just looks like failed S and M, man. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm. I, I'm. I know I'm being biased. Like I know I'm being biased. Go ahead and you can call me on it for sure. I know for sure I am being biased. So. But that's my, it's my brain. It filters, it looks at that stuff and goes, it's, ugh, just doesn't, nothing grabs me. I don't know. I was, when we were painting Warcry, I was like, look, a buff dude. Look at that buff dude. Oh, you know, I like the bird things, kind of. I was like, oh, bird things. Cool. But nothing was like, oh, man, I really need to play this now. None of, none of the, the, Minis or that kind of stuff really just it just looked like boring to me. I don't know. And Warcry is like it's a very casual game. I know people talk about oh, but you got to think about your sword group and shield group and what and you're like it's not really guys. If you think this is deep deep tactical thinking, we got we got to play some more games. <laughs> Necromunda, I'd love to find good tabletop progression based game. It Necromunda is okay. Again, aesthetic boring to me. Um if you wanted to play a progression type game, uh Frostgrave, I like that. Uh I think what else is uh there's some um hell, I would even try Free Blades. I don't know. Oh man, is this a job for Dirty Bone? This may be a job for Dirty Bone. Let's get a let's get one little layer on here, and then we'll decide. 
Everybody loves Dirty Bone. Dirty Bone is the best. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, am I biased? Yes, totally biased. I will totally, will tell you right out of the gate. Yes, I'm biased against Games Workshop. But that would mean if I were to come out here and go, man, that Games Workshop game, such a good game, you guys would be like, holy crap, they must have just invented the... Because to get me to say, to give them praise, oh man, that new 40K... <laughs> <laughs> but I came out and I was like, oh, can't wait to get myself a set of Primaris Marines. You would be like, what the hell? What the hell happened? Frostgrave is fun. You just didn't like that the wizard only leveled up in advance. Yeah, that's also, that's fair, dude. Because you had some, you always got like cool people in your party. Um, also, Frostgrave, uh, at least the first edition, there were some there were some glaring balanced issues with some of the spells. <laughs> you had certain combinations of spells. Uh, the one that came to mind for me was having the combination of Wizard Eye and uh, and I think I think it's called Blinding Light. Blinding Light was so stupid if you got it off and you rolled like a twenty. <laughs> it means the whole rest of the game. And you could have got the other dude's wizard with it. Right? You get the other dude's wizard with blinding light. And he rolled a 20. <laughs> and he's got to go that entire game blind unless he miraculously rolls a 20. Yeah. Frostgrave was, is far from perfect. I don't know. But yeah, now it's a you guys are it now it's a challenge. We want to see who can get who can get me to play the first GW game. Hint, Blood Bowl probably. Blood Bowl is probably something I would play. In fact, uh, I'm supposed to play Blood Bowl with Jake. He got me a copy of uh, Blood Bowl Two, so we're supposed to play a game on stream. And he's talking about maybe starting a, a, an online league for Blood Bowl. So that's cool. Just auto-die. Yeah. I'm starting to lose the theme here on this guy. I don't know. Let's get some, let's get a little bit of red going on this. Pro tip, you can't get Octave to play a GW game. <laughs> it's difficult. Put it to you that way. It's difficult. It ain't going to be the easiest thing to get me to play a GW game. And I don't even know if it's because... I just don't like the company. I don't think it's that. Hell, I still play Guild Ball. Steamforge games are a bunch of pricks. I don't care. <laughs> right? It's not necessarily that I don't like the company. It's just that it's boring to me. That setting is boring to me now. It's 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 a place. It's it's a been there, done that type thing for me. Where it's like I don't. Yeah, I no longer have interest in revisiting that world anymore. It just doesn't. Um, Right? It just doesn't do anything for me. Then you sack cut and charges. Privateer press and bring life back to my tape, favorite tabletop game of all time. <laughs> yeah, what happened to War Machine? People will be hating Mark III with a passion. Kevin was a big War Machine player. He won't touch Mark III. Andrew was a big War Machine player. He won't touch Mark III. Damn, dude. What? What? I, I... I couldn't play War Machine. I probably would have really enjoyed Mark II had Orange County not had the biggest collection of assholes playing <laughs> Mark II. 
right? You guys, you local guys know, you know, you've, you've heard the stories of, uh, you know, some of the folks that would play at Brookhurst Hobbies and even a couple of people that would play at Comic Quest and, um, they just, the, there were some massive dickheads playing War Machine at one point uh, during, like, Mark II. And I, it was, I just couldn't, I'm like, I, I, I'm not, I can't spend my, my, um, I can't spend my, my one day a week gaming with these people. <laughs> right? Life is short, man. I need to. I need to do other things. I just don't. I'm not getting enough. I'm not getting enough there. And maybe when it dries, it'll be all right. I don't know. I think I need. I really do think I need dirty bone. Where the hell is my dirty bone? It's the best color ever, and it's called dirty bone. Let me see if I can find it. The Realm in Brea was a spot for which we had a nice community. Well, that's cool. Oh, shit. Yes. Dirty bone. They tried to balance it. Dirty bone is best color. Whenever you're worried about your paint job, dirty bone is there to make it all better, kids. Seriously, maybe I should just, uh, maybe I should just decide that I'm only going to promote Aristea from now on. <laughs> I'm only going to do two Aristea tournaments a year, and that's it. I'm not pushing any more games, just going to play Aristea forever. There you go. There's my, there's my retirement. I actually, believe it or not, when when uh, Malifaux did fall apart over here, I actually did have a, uh, I actually did have a retirement plan. My plan was I was going to just support Cypher Studios miniature games and not care. Because Cypher Studios, at the time, Cypher Studios had, they only had two games, okay? One of those games was a game called Anima Tactics. Uh, and the other game was a game called Hell Dorado. And these were both small, very boutique level games. And they had some of the best, bar none, some of the greatest metal miniatures ever made. You can argue, come on, bring your Rackham, bring your all your, all your, all your, you know, top of the line uh, metal miniatures. I'm telling you right now, those two games, Anima Tactics and Hell Dorado, had they had miniature lines that could rival the best that were out there. Um, and so these games were perfect. These games were these games were a perfect thing for me to be like. I'm just going to promote these two little games and live in my own little quiet area of the world, and no one will bug me about Malifaux ever again. Um, that was the plan. That was the plan. And then Ninja Division happened. Right, and then Relic Knights happened, and it was like, oh my gosh, so many people like these games. Here we go, we're back in this thing again. But, and then, and then the two games that I really loved, Anima Tactics and Hell Dorado. Well, guess what? They got canceled. They they were over, and it was like, oh crap. Well, at least we have Relic Knights and Wrath of Kings because those are both really good. Ah oh, shit, canceled and canceled. Ah, 
Okay, we got Guild Ball, guys. Guild Ball, let's... Here we go. Guild Ball... Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> and this is where we are today, friends. This is... This is this is where we're at. So that was our that was our that your little thirty second history lesson on how Octave loves games that get canceled. Uh, and they're awesome games and you guys are dicks for canceling your games. You stupid game manufacturers. But yeah. Okay. Much better. Much, much better. Okay. Oh, wait. What am I doing? You can't just dirty bone and walk away, guys. I know we all want to. But you must dirty bone responsibly. Cutter's kind of mating looks. It's their, it's the 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 Warjacks are hilarious because they they had shoulder pads the likes of which even God has never seen, and and they had these little chicken legs. And the Warjacks always cracked me up that they had those little chicken legs. Uh, wow, it was a lot of, there's a, dang, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of spicy comments about War Machine in the chat right now. I'm going to let you guys go at it. I'm going to finish this, uh, you, you air that shit out, man. You didn't like, they did you dirty. I can bring it home and bring the, yes, I will. Let's do that. But first, I just want a little bit of... You see how Dirty Bone just makes life better? Look at that. Such a great color. Dirty Bone. This segment brought to you by Dirty Bone. Look at that. Okay. Let's do the... Uh... Let's do the black... Sean, are you working tomorrow? Because there's Guild Ball happening tomorrow at CQ. Aaron has pretty much the whole day off. And I am going to try... I'm going to try to free up for a game. Maybe two games. Two games would be sweet. No, oh, my games are dying. I know. That's it. We have to give up now, guys. It's time to, you know, it's time for me to, to, to give it all up. I'm going I'm to start painting my uh, whatever fucking army. I'm going to play Imperial Fists. Okay, guys? Playing, playing, yeah. There you go. I'm going to be... I'm just going to be dead behind the eyes. I'm going to play Imperial Fists. I'm going to go like, yay, it's the 41st millennium, guys. Here we go. It's all the grim darkness of the far future. It's only war. <laughs> like, I'm just going to I'm just gonna be that guy. I'm just going to be like, oh, God, it's so grim dark. What are you going to do? Oh, grim dark so hard. Oh, man. You thought you were grim dark. These guys really grim dark. Yep. I'm going to talk about how loyal people need to be to the Emperor and shit. Can't be loyal to the Emperor, guys. <laughs> there we go. 41st millennium. Yep. That's it. That's it. I'm out of the, I'm out of the miniature, miniature hustling game, man. I'm just gonna, just gonna play 40k. Just gonna. <laughs> Selling all my other stuff. Nobody. Yeah. Sell all my Gill Ball and all my, 
uh, Batman stuff and all my Malifo stuff and sell all that and buy one 40k army. Okay? Actually, is it going to be Imperial Fist? It's got to be Imperial Fist because then I get to tell you how much I love Rogel Dorn and how badly I don't want to spill my gene seed all over him. Like I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you about my purity tests, and uh, you know, just how I how much I hate the Xenos. I hate the Xenos guys, but Warhammer is for everybody. <laughs> All right, calm down. Jeez, don't. God, don't take me so seriously. People getting all bent out. This is, this is my livelihood, Octave. Fuck you. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want people being like that about it. <laughs> oh, man. I kill me. All right. So, all right. I'm going to read. We're just, I'm going to chill for a minute and we'll read some comments. <laughs> Ah. Uh, they should just do it like Magic does. Instead of rewriting the rules, just ban models and competitive play. I feel like 40k, what they need to do, and maybe they're trying to do this with contrast paint, because maybe somebody has figured out that if they could get color, if you could, they could teach you how to put color on your models and paint. Let's say you could paint, you know, uh, 25 models a year and your typical army is like 50 models plus all the big stupid shit you put on the board right so typically it takes you a year to paint or two years to paint a full uh army right so they figure okay that's the average cycle uh and what we're going to want them to do is we're going to want them to buy a brand new army every year or every every two years uh spend and spend that amount of money and then buy another codex. So I think they, they really kind of figured out like how much um, how much that, 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 that they need from your butthole in order to live. So it's like let's just keep uh, you know we can, as long as people keep buying. And you're like, oh, it's going to take forever to make all those different sculpts. And they're like, no, brilliant, mate. Here's what we're going to do. And they just make you buy the same fucking space marine they just change the we'll just make him a little bit bigger this year and we'll call him uh secondus because they had primaris the first year and they just they'll just repose the same basic shit and you know let's put some more gothic furniture on it around him and on his base like and people will buy it they'll eat that shit up They'll just keep buying. However, how, how do we how do we ensure that they buy? Let's just uh, make him make them even stronger, and you know, and let's just codex creep. Not even like unapologetically. Let's just keep doing that. <laughs> but if they could make it like magic, if they could make 40k like magic, and make it so that you had to buy, I mean, they kind of do, right? They, if I, I, I'm curious to know. For the people that are into 40k, and I mean like, you know, you go to you go to lots of tournaments, you go to lots of events, you play 40k, it's the only war game that you really play, like really play, and you know, you play it twice a month faithfully. I'm curious to know, like, how much do you spend a year on your miniatures? Um, now, personally, I think I'm going to just go conservatively and say... I probably spend with the you know three four games that I faithfully play and the handful of other games that I juggle. I would say I wouldn't say it's completely out of bounds to say that I spend close to what the average 40k player like you know we'll say dedicated 40k player spends every year on 40k, right? So some quick math. Right, let's see, we got four game systems. Let's say I play four game systems, and each year I'm going to spend about 250 in each game system, right? Oh, I want to buy this team, and I want to buy this team. I'm not talking about the money I make back selling it or commissioning it. I'm just talking about money that I spend, money that comes out of my pocket to uh, sustain the hobby, 
or sustain my my participation in the hobby right so let's say that takes so it's a thousand bucks we'll say it's a thousand bucks for the four main games um and that might be a little much for me i probably i i don't no maybe i do maybe i spend a thousand bucks a year that's probably true and then uh and then you know another we'll call it another two to five hundred on all the other systems i may test or try or anything else so let's say conservatively i spend twelve hundred dollars a year on my miniature gaming hobby okay so i spend twelve hundred dollars a year let's say twelve hundred dollars a year i could get you know for 40k i could get a pretty solid army with lots and lots of options i might even be able to get two armies if i did it right if i you know if i if i knew exactly what i needed and that sort of thing but let's just say that that uh you know that the average 40k player you know dedicated again maybe they spend twelve hundred dollars a year playing 40k right i spend twelve hundred dollars a year playing all of my systems but on average each manufacturer i'm supporting maybe only gets you know three to four hundred dollars total whereas games workshop they get that full 1200 plus a year and they'll get 1200 plus next year and they'll get even more next year when their prices go up so do you see what the the mountain that you're up against and and what you know what your level of consumerism that the gw knows that you are capable of and willing to do uh and you're you know so you could like literally like that is that is literally you supporting like the company and and think about this like for every player like me that will spend twelve hundred dollars a year on <clears throat> half a dozen different systems uh that there's prop that that there's at least 20 players for every one of me there's at least 20 40k players that are spending 1200 dollars a year on 40k now if they could get it to magic level they could get it to magic level support where uh where that same player that spends 1200 dollars a year um to buy a new 40k army every year and you know buy replace all their models and do it again now they're making you know they're getting closer i wouldn't say that they are but they're getting closer to that magic the gathering type money right they figure out that's all they that's all they're really trying to do they're trying to figure out how to get like how do you keep how do you get people to just keep buying the same shit over and over and over again well you never you, those the hits the drug can never really deliver it has to deliver the first couple of times and you get that excitement from playing it and you want to do more and you want to collect more and you want to get more but each subsequent hit it's like a drug each subsequent hit doesn't satisfy you 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 oh, i gotta spend four hundred dollars on squad just to get back to normal <laughs> right it's true it's 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 <clears throat> it, it is using like addictive behavioral psychology to get you to uh consistently stay in that uh and it works very well and you know kudos to them for having such a good you know working successful model uh so i don't know man i mean it's from a from an objective standpoint if i were to play 40k and only 40k and i gave up all of my other games i wouldn't assuming i would still do commissions somehow like i would still be painting this for other people and crying <laughs> oh get to play this I got, uh, I got a Space Marine. Like, I don't, you know, like, oh my god, can I show you guys? I just, I want to at least, can I at least show you Clock King? Clock King. I love Clock King. 
right? He's awesome. <laughs> Could, anyways, um, right? If if I decided not to promote miniatures games anymore, and the safest bet, and I wanted to keep a miniature gaming hobby in my life, obviously the safest bet would be to continue playing uh, only 40k, right? And that's kind of like where where Kevin is at. He's like, I'm gonna have a kid. I don't really have time to like help promote a new game or you know be on shaky ground with a new game or especially in light of what happened to Steamforged. That was his game, that was his love, that was his passion, right? And he's like, you know, fuck it. I'm only going to play like you know, 3 or 4 times a year. I can't be part of this like really active community. I'm going to just play 40k. I think you mean Guild Ball, dude. <laughs> Making me sad, right? But that's the thing. Like, we're talking about like the 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 logical conclusion would be if you weren't if you weren't just pushing these different systems and and um, playing different games. The logical conclusion would be to just settle down to a life of 40k, right? M uh, most and you would. That's just the life. That's just and if it continues like that. Right? If it continues like that, you're just like these these games are they're they're always they're always just going to be this really really minor thing, um, and maybe eventually these things, you know, get removed from the from the shelf altogether, because a store owner has to understand like. You know, for for my for the, the the cubic feet of my store, and what I could put on my shelf, and you know, and and on my racks and that kind of thing, I making money off 40k per square foot versus you know, night models per square foot. It's not even a comparison, right? Every square foot I have invested in 40k is going to continue to turn product it's going to continue to make money uh, whereas these are a massive gamble to keep this on the shelf to keep anything that is not 40k on the shelf is a significant gamble so yeah right so i mean it, it's this is you know so so somebody like me who I, I just won't play 40k, I just don't like it, it's just not, I won't do it. I, I'm going to live in, I have to like accept that this is the cycle of gaming that, that I'm going to, that I, that I will have to play and enjoy, right? And, you know, at some point, maybe, uh, Maybe it becomes too much work to do all the other stuff to keep these games alive. And so people like me, eventually, we just go, well, I'm going to continue to buy these models, uh, but I can't really, you know, at, at some point, it does. it's not going to make sense for the store to continue to carry those models because they don't really make money off of them, right? The, the, when they order new stuff and it comes in, it's like, okay, I'll... I'll buy it because I, you know, I do everything I can to support the stores, uh, but it's not realistically. It's just kind of a gesture, right? It's not like random guy comes in and needs the 40k, buys the 40k, right? It's kind of where that's that's kind of the reality of it. That's kind of where this is, and that's you know, 40k has you know 40k is, is it's it's not going to be supplanted uh it it, it it isn't it the only way 40k could be supplanted is if a large and i mean large number of its fans picked up and sucked it up and dealt with the you know the number of idiosyncrasies and quirks that they would have to deal with to get into uh, night models, for example. Right? Let's say we, we, how difficult, like, even if we got 10 people 
at CQ. If we get 10 people at CQ to switch from 40k and they all wanted to play Batman 3rd edition, I would imagine how difficult it would be for them. Because it's like, oh, well, you know, here's here's the stuff in the store. Uh, the rest of you guys are going to have to order from night. And uh, here's, the, you got to print your, your cards. And, oh, we can't find a starter box anywhere. So you're going to have to, a lot of it's going to be do it yourself. And it's it you can't do that without a lot of hand-holding. And you just got 10 people out of a game that was making Comic Quest a lot of money, right? That, like I was saying earlier with the math, like oh, $1,200 a year times 10. Like, do a little math. Like, think about that trade-off. Would they really want 10 players to stop playing 40K where they're getting constant turns at the register versus jumping into this where it's going to be like, oh, we bought the 30% that was usable at the store uh, and the rest of it's got to sit there and hope that it disappears and we're just going to, we're all going to just wait for your next order, right? I don't know, man. The amount of shit 40K fans deal with from GW is nuts. In no world should that be all right. Yeah, I was saying, I was telling Nelson this earlier, Kevin, that GW is the most big dick alpha male shit ever in the 40k, I mean, in the miniature gaming universe. You gotta, like, put it into perspective. They come out, they walk into the middle of the crowd of these angry nerds, and they say, alright, so, the good news is, we resculpt, we resculpted Space Marines, again. This time, they have new poses, and we turned them this way. Oh, oh yeah, and uh, we got new codexes, and, you know, and everyone's getting excited and all this stuff. <clears throat> and, and then they say, yeah, and you're going to pay 25% per more this year. We just decided. We we had a talk. We're going to, we're you're, you're going to suck down this price increase. Uh, we're not going to balance our game because fuck you. Why would we do that? We need you to continue to buy the new stuff. And we know you'll do it. Oh, by the way, we don't really make. We're a miniature making company, so we're just going to say that instead of trying to make the game any fair. But you're just going to keep buying our shit because you don't have a choice, do you? And they're just going to do that. They're just going to throw their, their – they're just going to slap you right in the face with their meat and just – and walk out of there. And you're going to be like – I hate you so much, DW. I'm gonna write this open letter, and you're you're saying that with tears in your eyes and your wallet wide open. You see what I'm saying? They just they will not. That's GW. It, they're at the point where they can literally Chad big dick Chad big dick move you all day and night, and there's nothing you're gonna do about it. There is nothing you're gonna do about it. You're going to buy every single piece of shit that comes rolling out of their buttholes. And you're going to wrap that all up. That's that's what it is, man. So, you're, so, what, so what I'm saying is if they deal with all the stuff you just said, they can buy from Knight's website and print some cards. No, I don't think so. I, for some it's it's... Okay, let me back... Let me actually correct what I was saying, that's the excuse that they're going to say, right? It's kind of like, okay, in the business I'm in, now I'll talk about the, um, I'll talk about the painting business here for a minute, like not, not, not commission painting, but like my actual job, right? So in, in the actual painting business, okay, you have what are in the professional painting businesses, you have contractors, Right. And contractors, they always have a paint store that they deal with. And, you know, Jim from the paint store and they're they're very familiar with Jim at the paint store and Jim at the paint store. Um, the, Jim at the paint store it has a relationship with this person. They charge way too much money, but they like Jim at the paint store. 
right? And so they go and, you know, they go and do their jobs and they keep buying from Jim. Jim is my guy. I'm just going to keep buying from him. Oh, man, Jim's charging me too much money. But, you know, I don't want to take my chances with the other guy. I don't know who that other guy is. I don't really trust them. So when we're trying to get customers from other paint stores that are from other paint manufacturers, we know, like we can scientifically prove, oh, our paint does this better. Like it's fact. It's observable, provable, repeatable fact. We do this better. Our prices are lower. Um, you know, you could do that. And we, we demonstrate this to, our, to the customer. But the fact of the matter is that, that customer does not want to leave gym. They do not want to change. They do not want to be out in the wilderness, out in the unknown. Um, to a to a fatal degree, and the excuse that they're going to give because they're working with a with somebody from my company, the excuse they're going to give our sales rep is bullshit. Like, oh, well, I didn't like the way it did this. Uh, you know, your paint did this, and I've never. Oh, good day, Cameron. Thanks for tuning in. You know, I've never seen this in 20 years of painting. And I and I go out on these job sites with these big customers. And I know they are full of shit. That this paint, that paint will do that. That it's a known thing. It's been in the paint industry for 40 years. You're full of shit when you're telling me that, you know, it doesn't do this. You, all you're really trying to do is you're trying to tell that new sales guy no. And you don't want to tell them no for the real reason, which is I just don't want change. Um, you're, you're telling them no for some other reason. I don't want, uh, I don't like the way it does this. I don't want to print Batman cards. I don't want to look for that. Kind of, like, that's what I'm saying. It's, there, it's, there's just so much risk. If you're the, if you're the 40K player and you, I know this because I played 40K for 15 years. That's how hard it is to get out of 40K. I I played 40K for 15 years, and I hated it for at least 11 of those years. <laughs> That's full of slick. I hated the experience of playing 40K for 11 out of the 15 years that I played it. And it was like, I don't want to... Uh, but I have fall painted armies. Aw. Oh, when well, the new codex comes out, all I have to do is buy these new models, and I'm caught up. Oh, man, I can go to a store at any time. I could go to any store, any part of the country, any GW, and I can break out my army, and I know I can get a game. I can get a game. I, and I always forget that when you do that, you get the worst game ever, typically, because you usually, they you, they don't know who you are, so they throw you against that asshole that's been in this, that hangs out in the store that no one wants to play because they're annoying. But you can, you can play, a game of 40k anytime you want, um, and that's a lot to walk away from, right? You know that there will always be store support. You know that there will always be players. You know that a heavy bolter will always be strength five. You'll know. You'll know stuff like that. Playing 40k forever, and so when you tell somebody, "Hey, some of these games out, you should look at them. They're really, really good." They're really, really good, and they're cheap, and they're fast, and they make sense. And the companies, some of them, well, maybe not a lot of them, but some of them actually do care about their players, and they actually are interested in making a balanced game, right? You can tell them all of those stories, but they'll come up with different reasons. Like, oh, I yeah, I don't really have time for another game, which is bullshit. <laughs> When people tell you, oh, I'm done for another game, what they really mean is, it's not important enough for me to carve new time out for, right? I'm going to have, you're asking me, if, you're, if, if I'm playing this game, and you're asking me to play this game, right? Hey, look, it's another Batman. Um, <laughs> if you're asking me to play this game, now I have to find, I've got to carve out other time to play this game and still try to play this game. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to say, oh, I don't have time for another game. Oh. If, if you liked it enough, if it was important enough to you, you'd have time. And it's true of anything. 
If you like anything enough, you will have time for it. If you like anything enough, you'll have money for it. So what they're saying is, I don't want to, I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it. You know, one of the games that I perpetually turn down is bolt action. I'm always like, and I look at bolt action, I'm like, oh man, it does look really cool. I would love to play a Japanese army in World War II. That would be so cool. Whatever, right? And I see guys playing bolt action. I'd be like, oh man, I really want to play some bolt action. But I'm lying. No. Because if I really wanted to play bolt action, I'd be fucking playing bolt action. Like, it's that simple. If I really, like, it's not a hard thing. If I... If I really liked something enough and I was compelled to do it, I would just do it. Now, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm a different personality than other people, right? I, I, maybe I'm a little, I have a little bit more initiative than the average gamer. That might be true. Uh, but it's I, I still consider that a fact that if you like something enough, you'll, you'll make, you'll make it, it happen. You'll make time for it. You'll, um, and so, and and conversely, if you don't like something enough, no 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 proof of it being better or good or useful is going to prove you otherwise. Like like my complete and total bias against 40k, right? You could come up to me today and go, oh man. Like Kevin could come up to me today and go, Octave, 40k is a better game than Guild Ball. Like he could walk up to me and tell me that. And, like, have conviction and, like, really believe that. And then be like, nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe, like, he, he could maybe have empirical evidence that it's a better game. Actually, his empirical evidence would be that it outsells Guild Ball at least 100 to 1. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying, though. You know, bias on one side and then just like straight up there's just straight up preferences that's all it all it comes down to anyways 40k isn't <laughs> all right guys well it is late and bane the bat has been done for a while so uh i'm gonna call it here and go to sleep hope you guys have a good one don't feel too depressed the 40k is the inevitable end for all of us when we finally when we finally go to bed and end our miniature gaming careers it's either 40k or you quit the hobby that's so sad <laughs> and probably true all right good night everyone thanks for watching